This activity is called Levitating Ping Pong Ball. What I want to do is I want to give you a brief overview of what this activity challenge is about, talk to you about the materials you're going to need, show you a couple of demonstrations of it in action, and then finish off with what the science behind this is. Okay, the brief summary. As you can see behind me here, we've got a, a ping pong ball. Obviously, we're going to have some straws, and students are going to be working in groups to figure out how to get this ball to levitate, just to hang out up there in the air. Uh, and then not only get, it, get that to happen, but also to try to figure out why that's happening. The materials that you'll need. You'll need a straw, obviously, if you can get one that has uh, the bendy part on it so that you can turn it to uh, a 90 degree angle like this, that would be best. If you have a choice between uh, larger or smaller diameters, go with the smaller diameter. I've got listed on the material sheet uh, three um, paper clips. These aren't really needed. Uh, I'll show you in my demonstration later that we can have something like this to help hold the ball. So that's something that you could build on there. You're gonna need a hair dryer for a demonstration at the end and you could also use a shop vac as well. Those are, are pretty neat. If you have really young students where maybe this could be a little bit of a challenge for them in terms of blowing, you could go to like a dollar store and they have little uh, party favors. Things that look like this right here and it works on a similar principle in terms of you blow into it and the ball levitates up in the air and they've kind of got little baskets here. All right, for some demonstrations now, I showed you earlier this thing where I've taken the paper clips, opened them up to make like a little basket at the top. We could then take this straw, turn it at a 90 degree angle, and students could take their ping pong ball, they could set it inside of our kind of little homemade basket here. And then if students blow into this, you'll watch, you'll see this thing levitate. and then it falls back into our basket here. Really, the paper clips just help, especially with students getting it to start to levitate and then have, uh, pop back down there. It's not needed, as I mentioned earlier. You could just take the straw, start blowing, and then let go of the ping pong ball on the top. So we've got that. These little guys I showed you earlier, these ones are a little bit easier. to blow into for uh, maybe the really young students. At the very end, we've got something like a hair dryer. If you want to take this at the, at the very end, this works as a, a great demonstration. So usually I save the, the hair dryer or the shop vac for the very end for kids to experiment with. And uh, also if you have any students where they really struggle with uh, having enough uh, breath to blow this out, I give them the opportunity to run the hair dryer and the shop vac, uh, a little more exciting for them. Now for the science behind this. This really deals with Bernoulli's principle. And Bernoulli's principle, it's kind of complicated if you listen to it, it says something like uh, the, the velocity of a fluid and the pressure in that fluid are inversely uh, related to each other. Or an easier way of saying that is if your velocity of a fluid, in this case air, goes up, the pressure goes down. And the opposite is true. If the velocity of the fluid goes down, then the pressure goes up. And that's seen right here. The ping pong ball, as it's levitating up in the air, we would think that it would just want to fall off to the side, but something draws it back to the middle. And that something is when your, your ping pong ball is being pushed up here, and then it starts to move to the side, we have air that's not moving. Okay, so that would be a low velocity, so low speed of the air, that's higher pressure. So there's a higher pressure pushing the ball back over here, whereas the air in the stream that's flowing, it's moving pretty fast here. So this would be a higher velocity, which results in less pressure. So less pressure here, more pressure here, and it comes back over into the stream of air. That's as we're blowing this, that's why we start to notice it, you know, kind of jumping around a little bit, is it's running into air that's not moving quickly, and therefore that has a higher pressure, pushes it back in. One final note here, my students absolutely love this activity, but one thing that I have to warn them with is that when they go into another classroom or they go to lunch, to make sure that they put this away. I let them keep it so they can show things at home, but it's it can be a distraction to other learning that maybe should be occurring. So uh, something you might want to tell your students. Have fun.